Proverbs chapter number 24. Book of Proverbs, please, chapter number 24. I'd be in a mess, wouldn't you, if it weren't for the Lord? And I'm glad that uh, that's not reality. I don't have to live uh, as if there is no God, because there is a God. And I don't have to live like the world lives, because I'm not a part of the world. I'm saved. And that affords me great advantages, and you great advantages. And uh, we can rejoice in those advantages, amen, those privileges that we know God. And not just that we know Him, but that He knows us. And uh, that puts us in a pretty good spot, amen. I rejoice in that tonight. Proverbs chapter 24. It's going to be a simple, practical, uh, kind of pointed message tonight. I feel like I might have overwhelmed uh, everybody last Wednesday night, I don't know what it was, last Wednesday night, preached on those the mystery of the churches, and um, I know Wednesday night is, it's late, I do not like it getting dark this early, that's the one thing I don't like about the fall, I love everything about the fall besides the fact that it's dark right now if you walk outside, and uh, that, does, is that just me or does that make you tired? It makes me sleepy, all right? Uh, I think God made it for you and I that when it's dark, we're supposed to be asleep. And, um, and so when it, when it gets dark outside, I understand that tendency, it makes us tired. And we worked all day, and we've got a hundred different things that we're dealing with or that we are thinking about and uh, all kinds of different problems, and I understand that. However, uh, you and I should still be able to set all those things aside and, and focus our attention on the Lord. Amen. And if you can't do that at church, you're going to have a hard time doing that tomorrow morning. There's all kind of stuff to do tomorrow morning, right? You got to get up, you want to eat, you got to, you know, get dressed, you got to get to work or get to school or whatever it is that you've got to do. Uh, you're a lot more pressed for time tomorrow morning than you are right now, right? We've set this side, of t we've set this time aside. Uh, as a church time, a time for us to, to open the Bible and, and to pray and to talk to God and, and to, to get focused and engaged with what He's wanting to do and what He wants to say to us. And so I hope and pray that we'll be able to do that tonight. Amen? We'll be able to hear from heaven and worship the Lord because if you can't do that here, you're going to have a hard time doing it anywhere else. Amen? And so I hope and pray that we'll be able to do that. I want to preach tonight on this thought, down but not out. Down but not out. Let's start in verse number 15, please. Proverbs chapter number 24. The Bible says, Lay not wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Spoil not his resting place. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. I'm mainly interested in the first few words there, that first phrase in verse number 16. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. That's what I would like to, to preach on tonight. I'm sure you've heard uh, these statements, statements like somebody fell on hard times. You ever heard that? Uh, someone fell out of church. So-and-so fell, uh, fell into sin. So-and-so had a fall from grace, or they fell into trouble, or whatever. We have a lot of these uh, phrases uh, our culture is replete with these phrases concerning people having a decline of some sort in their life. And you and I would look at that and we would categorize that as a fall. And if we're going to be honest, all of us have taken a tumble a time or two in our lives. Amen? In, in a lot of different areas of our life, we've had falls in our life. We live in a world that is full of snares a world that is full of distractions. Listen, a world that is no friend to Jesus Christ. And if you're going to try to live for God, you're going to have some times in which you feel like you've declined. You feel like you've receded. You feel like you have failed. There are heartaches and trouble, and at times we lose our footing, if we're going to be honest tonight. Amen? We lose our footing emotionally. Uh, we lose our footing spiritually. We lose our footing financially or materially or in regards to our health. And in many of these different areas, you're going to face falls in your life. Naturally, when someone falls, they lose contact. They're off their feet, right? And then they feel impact when they hit the ground. I've always heard it uh, said that people who have a, a fear of heights 
Uh, they say that I'm not afraid of falling as much as I am of hitting the ground, right? And, and that's a natural thing. People are afraid of the consequences of a fall, and yet you and I are going to face falls so many times in our life. Life can knock you down. It can leave you seeing stars. It can leave you not knowing which way is up. And I believe that's why God put this verse in the Bible. Amen? To just encourage the children of God that though you may fall, uh, that fall is not final. Amen? That fall doesn't have to be fatal. Uh, that, fall, that fall doesn't have to be the end of the story. It can be the beginning of a story in your life when you and I fall. And so he's put this word, this verse in the word of God to encourage us. Now the main thrust or the main message of this proverb is directed towards the wicked. Look back in verse number 15 again. It says, lay not wait, O wicked man. And so it's a proverb directed towards and speaking towards the wicked. It says, oh, uh, lay not wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous, spoil not his resting place. He is warning, literally, against trying to rob or trying to destroy or harm the righteous. Well, why? Why would, why would he not want to do that? Verse number 16. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. The message is, you can't destroy him anyway. You can't destroy him anyway. And number two, it says, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. The proverb is telling us that by trying to cause the fall of somebody else, he is ensuring his own fall. If you try to make a, this righteous man, this just man to fall, he says, you will fall into mischief. You will surely be destroyed. Now the world looks at that and they call it karma. Right? They call it karma. Or what goes around comes around. That kind of a, a thing. We don't believe in that. Amen? We don't believe in that. Uh, we do believe in the principle of sowing and reaping, though. Amen? Which I'm sure people could look at that, and, and as an outside observer, and not knowing the Bible, and not knowing Jesus, you could almost confuse those two things and make them sound synonymous. But we do know there is a just God in heaven. Amen? And He's going to render to every man according to His works. He's going to recompense evil proportionately and justly in His righteous judgment. And so that is going to happen in this life. And so if you find pleasure in the fall of others, watch out, you've got a fall coming your way. Amen? And that's what he's, he's warning this wicked man. Uh, don't, don't, don't try to, to lay in wait. Don't try to spoil his resting place. Don't try to assault and to attack this just man because in, by doing so you are surely going to be attacked and to be thrown down and destroyed as well. However, my interest tonight is not as much in the wicked man but rather the just man and how that a just man can fall down but he is never down and out. Amen. So let's begin back in verse number 16. I want to say just a few things about this just man. It won't be long. We'll be done. Verse number 16, it begins by talking about his righteousness. It says, for a just man. That word just, it means righteous. Uh, it means that this person is lawful. God is saying that a man who is down but is never out is a righteous man. Now, I've been in some situations and times in my life where I felt like I was down and out, haven't you? Like you were down for the count, like there was no coming back from this situation, like you would never get over this problem, you would never get over this trial in your life. But this verse is here to tell us that there is a morning, amen. There is a sunrise, there is victory ahead of you. You don't have to quit just because you've fallen if you're a just man. If you're a just man. Now, this word just... Uh, again, it means righteous, and that, that, that what this does not mean is that he is just or that he is righteous in his own eyes. The person who thinks that they are just and righteous in their own eyes are those who are not just and righteous in the sight of God. Amen? I would go so far as to say this. You are either innocent in your own eyes and guilty before God, or you are guilty in your own eyes and innocent before God. Do y'all agree with that? You're one of the other. You can't be both. The person who is so consumed with themselves as to think that they don't do any wrong, those who would be offended if you were to tell them for all have sinned to come short of the glory of God, those kind of people are innocent in their own eyes, but they're guilty before a holy God. I'd much rather just raise the white flag of surrender and say, God, I know that I'm guilty. God, I know that I'm not righteous. But if you and I will do that, that white flag will impute some righteousness to us. And then God can look at us and say, he is a just man. 
I'm glad I'm just in the eyes of God. Amen? And you and I are justified. If you and I have any righteousness or, or, or uh, being justified, it's, it's not in and of ourselves. It is something that Christ has to do for us and that Christ has to give to us. You and I believe in the imputed righteousness of Christ. And that is when a person gets saved, what I'm saying is the just man is a saved man. All right? When you and I get saved, he takes all of your sin. And he places it on the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he takes all of Christ's righteousness and he imputes that to you. He puts that to your account. And so now when God sees me, when God sees you, he sees righteous. He sees justified. He he sees someone who has never sinned. As I often say, I don't see that when I look at you and you don't see that when you look at me. But I thank God for the word of God and it it tells us that when God sees us, he sees us as righteous before him. This is a justified man. And when you get justified, listen, when you get saved, God does a big work in your life. God will give you a new heart, right? God will give you new desires. God God will put a supernatural love and and, and empowerment in your soul when you get saved. So much so that, as I've said, it will make you supernatural. Do things that are not common to man. Look in verse number 17. I just want to point out one example of that. Verse number 17. It says, Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth. So we just talked about how that this wicked man, he lies in wait, he tries to spoil the house of the just man, and he says, well, you're going, you're going to fall into mischief if you do that. And then he says in verse 17, Rejoice not when your enemy falleth into, in, into uh, when, he, when your enemy falleth. So if you're the just man, And the the wicked man, he assaults you. He's your enemy. It says, don't be happy when God punishes that wicked man. It says, rejoice not when your enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth, lest the Lord see it, and it displease him, and he turn away his wrath from him. Here's what happens. He's saying there is a, a wicked man who assaults a just man. God sees that, and then God punishes the wicked man. He says, but the just man has to be careful that he doesn't rejoice and be happy in the punishment of the wicked man or God is liable to not punish the wicked man and what's implied in the text is to then punish the just man. You say, what what is your point? You and I who are saved have a unique ability not to revel, not to find joy in the punishment of those who hate our guts. I'm not going to enjoy the great white throne judgment. Right? You won't either. To see people cast into the lake of fire and experience that second death, I'm not going to enjoy that. Even though the wicked would love to see you and I destroyed, we take no pleasure in their destruction. That's, that is evidence that you and I have a, have a justified heart, if you will. That we are this righteous man or this just man. If you're saved by the grace of God, you take no pleasure. The Bible says that God takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. And you and I shouldn't either. You know why? Because God enjoys defending the just. But if you and I, who are supposed to be just... If we start taking pleasure in the destruction of the wicked, then we cease to be just, right? I think you and I should have the character and the quality of God, or try to, and not take pleasure in the death of the wicked. Amen? That, that, is, that is a description and a wonderful example of this just man and how he is to live and how you and I are to live as well. So we see uh, his righteousness. Let's look secondly at his recession or his fall. It says, For a just man, verse 16, For a just man falleth seven times. In this context, uh, this fall is referring to misfortune. It's referring to a trouble or a trial in the person's life. When you think about a fall, don't you think of something that is unintentional? Right? It's not something that you're necessarily at fault for. It's not something that you meant to happen. It's not something you wanted to happen or that you even deserved. It's just a fall. It's an unintentional, bad thing that happens in your life. Listen, 
Just because you're saved does not mean you are exempt from falling. It doesn't mean that you, you, you can't fall. James chapter 1, we preach through James, right? James chapter 1, it says, My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. When you suffer, when the wheels fall off and the bottom falls out, and, and it seems like everything is going wrong in your life, when you fall into diverse temptations, James doesn't even say if you fall into diverse temptations. He says when you fall into diverse temptations. It's going to happen. It is going to happen. The Bible is very plain. It tells us that it rains on the just and the unjust. It's going to happen to every one of us. If you're living for God, there's going to be times of confusion, times of difficulty, times when you feel like your heart is broken. And listen, it's not just going to happen once. This verse says that when he, that he for a just man falleth seven times. Albert Barnes said this about this phrase, seven times. He says seven times is a certain number for an uncertain number. Meaning it's, it's for sake of illustration. It's representative of a larger unknown number. You see that throughout the Bible. An example of that is in Job chapter 5, verse number 19, where the Bible says, He shall deliver thee in six troubles, yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. Seven is representative of a bigger number. It's not saying that you will, you will fall seven times, but you won't fall eight times. What he is saying is that the Christian life is one that is almost defined, it seems, by times of falling down, times of recession in your life. And again, you could apply that to every area of life. But there's going to be times when you fall. In fact, in fact, take your Bible and let's turn to 2 Kings chapter number 4, please. 2 Kings 4. I just want to read a couple of illustrations uh, of, of a fall taking place in somebody's life. Second Kings chapter number four. I'm interested in a in a particular phrase, but we're going to read a number of verses just to give the, the story, all right? Second Kings chapter number four, and I want you to think about the first phrase in verse number eight. Second Kings chapter four and verse number eight. It says, And it fell on a day. I want that to stick out in your mind, please. It fell on a day. That Elisha passed to Shunem, and there was a great, uh, where was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as oft as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is an holy man of God, which passeth by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed, and a table, and a stool, and a candlestick. And it shall be, when he cometh to us, he shall turn in Thither. So I would say in these verses, it fell on a good day in this woman's life. She's in contact with this preacher, this prophet who's coming by. She thinks we're going to do something good for him. We're going to serve God by building this little chamber that the prophet can stay in. I think we would all agree it fell on a good day this day. Look down in verse number 11. It says, and it fell on a day. That he came thither, and he turned uh, into the chamber and lay there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, Call this Shunammite. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he said unto him, uh, Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been very, or have been careful for us with all this care. What is it to, uh, to be done? What is to be done for thee? Wouldest thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among mine own people. And he said, What then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Verily, she hath no child, and her husband is old. And he said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood at the door, and he said, About this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, Nay, my lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thine handmaid. And the woman conceived and bare a son at that season that Elisha had said unto her, according to the time of life. I think we would all say in these verses, it fell on another good day. She's, she's getting the promised son that she had always wanted. 
Her wildest dreams are coming, through, are coming true in the verse, on the day that it fell on her. In this verse. Now look at verse number 18. It says, And when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his fathers, to the reapers, and he said unto his father, My head, my head. And he said to a lad, Carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. I think we would all say it fell on a tragic day in those verses. So we find this phrase three times, and it fell on a day, and it fell on a day, and it fell on a day. Let me ask you, has it ever fallen on a day in your life? Where you're just going about your business, you're just trying to live for God, you're, 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 you're doing the same old thing, and, and listen, life, it, it happens like that. There are so many days that we go through that seem to be extraordinarily normal. Right? Nothing big happens. It's just the same. You go through the motions and, 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 and you're, you're, you're not uh, keenly aware of the fact that, that it was, this was the day that the Lord had made. Uh, it, it's just, a, just another day. And you'll live like that sometimes for months and even years until it falls on a day. A day in particular. I've got some of those in my life. Amen? Some of those days in particular. Some of those days that stand out as a day of a fall. A day of tragedy. A day, when, a day that's not like all the other days. It stands out for a negative reason. Take your Bible and turn to the book of Job, please. The book of Job. Job chapter number 1. fell on a day in her life that was out of her control, that was bigger than she could handle. And that's going to happen for all of us. Amen? We're talking about falling, about just, man, just people, saved people experiencing a fall. We know from verse number 1 of Job 1 that Job was a perfect man, an upright one that feared God and eschewed evil. You could say that Job was a just man. Look down in verse number 6. It says Job chapter 1 verse number 6. Now there was a day. When the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them. I'm not going to read all the rest of these verses, but there is a day in Job's life where God recommends Job for suffering. There was a day. Look down in verse number 13. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking and wine in their eldest brother's house. We're not going to read through but you know that his oxen, his donkeys, his camels are all stolen. His sheep and his servants are burned with fire. And the Bible even says in Job chapter 1, the fire of God is fallen from heaven. Job experienced a day in his life, a fall in his life, where the only, as far as he was concerned, the only person who was responsible for his fall was God. Right? Right? He says the fire of God has fallen from heaven. Job is, it, it, it fell on a day in Job's life where it seemed like God had turned his back on him. Now you'd never say that with your mouth, but you've thought that before. Amen? You've probably thought that before. That it fell on a day when all of a sudden it just seemed like God had turned his back on you. That's what Job is going through. Chapter 2 and verse number 1, the Bible says, Again, there was a day when the sons of God come to present themselves before the Lord. And, 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 and as a result of that day, his health is taken away from him. What I'm trying to say is, it's going to fall on a day in your life, and, if it, and you could probably look back and see some times where it fell on a day, where difficulty struck, where there was a fall that took place in your life, and, if you, and if you might be there today. You might feel like right now you're flat on your back, you've experienced a great fall emotionally or financially or, 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 or in whatever way, maybe it's something to do with sin, it could be anything, but you have fallen and you, you feel like you just cannot get up from this fall. If it happened to Job, it can happen to me. I didn't read in 2 Kings chapter 4 that Shunammite woman did anything wrong. In fact, I saw her doing everything right. I look in Job 1 and 2 and I see Job doing everything right and it still fell on a day. 
for both of them. It's going to happen to all of us. Amen? It's going to happen to all of us. And I'm applying this specifically within the context. It's, it's, it's talking about troubles and trials of your life, that kind of a fall. One phrase that I don't like, and I'm, you'll still hear me use it from time to time, but, but I don't like it, and it is that someone fell into sin. So-and-so fell into sin as if it was an accident. Right? As if it was just unintentional. No, when a person, quote-unquote, falls into sin, it is completely intentional. It is on purpose. Amen. Every time when I'm so-called falling into sin in my life, I knew exactly what I was doing, and I chose to do it anyway. So I don't like to call it a fall because fall sounds accidental, but I do think you could refer to it as a fall, as a fall in the sense as it is, it is a great decline. There are a whole lot of Christians who have quote-unquote fallen into sin. You might be here tonight and you are living in the midst of a spiritual decline. You're not where you used to be with God. You're backslid on God. Amen, right? You're cold on God. You're not where you used to be. You've lost ground. You have slid in back. You've fallen spiritually. Now, I thank God that once we're saved, we're always saved. Amen? Even if you, quote, unquote, fall into sin. But listen to me. That is not a reason to stay down. I think there are some people who have this attitude of, well, you know, I prayed a prayer, and yeah, I was baptized, and yeah, I don't live for God. I'm just a backslider, but I'm just content to live my life a backslider. That person's not saved. Amen. person's not saved. If you're content to live your life in a fallen condition, you've never been born again. What does our verse say? A just man falleth seven times and riseth again. He's not content to stay down. He's not content to live that way. We see his righteousness and his recession, but lastly we see his rise. It says, for a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. God's intention for those who have fallen is to get up. Are you listening tonight? God's intention for those who have fallen is to get up. It's never to stay down. God doesn't want you to live that way. God saved you to be more than that. God saved you to, to, to be risen again to newness of life. Not to live in the same death and sin and wickedness that you used to live in. Though you may fall and though you will fall, you're not supposed to stay down. A just man won't stay down. Amen? Barnes said this about this verse. He said, though God permit the hand of violence sometime to spoil his tent, temptations to assail his mind, and afflictions to press down his body, he constantly emerges. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. You know why he constantly emerges? Because he's indwelt by the Spirit of God. Because he has, has Jesus Christ inside of him. You can't keep Jesus down. I'm not talking about rising up by, by your own power or by your own strength. I'm talking about Christ in you, the, the one who's in you being greater than he that's in the world. That's what I'm talking about. That's why he rises again. He constantly emerges, he says. And every time he passes through the furnace, he comes out brighter and more refined. I love that. Amen. It's as if... It's as if the falls of the just man make him more of a just man. The heartaches and the, the troubles of life that you and I go through, those falls, those, those times when it falls on a day, when I look back at my life and I see those moments, 
I can see that God used those moments to draw me closer to Him. Y'all getting that? All of these falls, all seven of them, if you will, that He talks about in this, in this verse, every time He gets up stronger, He gets up with a new perspective, He gets up with more love in His heart and devotion for Christ, Every time that he gets knocked down, he gets back up, and he's even more determined that he's going to continue serving God and continue loving God. And listen, just because you might be down right now, you can allow that to drive you to live for him even more than you have before. That's what a just man does when he falls. He understands God, I don't know why, this was not of my doing, this is not what I wanted, this is not what I asked for. But I do know that all things work together for good to them that love God. And this, this problem I'm facing has knocked me on my back, but I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to quit. Not sure where you're at tonight in regards to these truths, but I hope and pray if you've fallen for whatever reason, that you'll determine tonight that you're not going to quit. If you're down because you've, again, quote-unquote, fallen into sin, that you're not going to be content to stay there. The Bible says if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Listen, I've been at points in my life when I was backslidden and cold on God, and, 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 and I, I literally, I felt like that I could not do otherwise. You ever been there? I mean, I just felt like, I know that, 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 I, that I'm cold, I know that I'm distant, I know that I'm not where I'm supposed to be, and I just feel like I'm stuck here. I'm here to tell you, it might feel like that, but the Word of God tells us you're not stuck there. You don't have to stay there. You can get up. You can get up. You can go farther for God in your relationship with Him in your service to Him, you don't have to stay there. Amen? What's the old saying? That it's not how many times you fall, it's how many times you get up. My prayer is that tonight you'll determine that though there are going to be falls in your future, that they won't be the end of the story. When difficulties come, when trials come in your life, and when it falls on a day, you determine, I'm going to keep serving God. Amen? For a just man follows seven times and rises up again.